Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I have some job shop work coming up and the customer's giving me permission to film the entire process. So I thought what might be fun is to take you guys through the very start to the very end of a project. I realize that not everybody does machining work or cam tool pathing. So what I'm gonna do is take this video and break it up into three parts. In the first part, I'm gonna do the CAD work. The second part, I'm gonna do the cam work. And in the final part, we'll go to the Silex 7 and actually make what we created in the second video. Even if you don't do cam work, I'm gonna be covering a lot of things that are very CAD specific that can help you with your assemblies that you're gonna be doing going forward, such as joints and joint origins. What you see on the screen is an M-Lock 125 dual vise. So I've got a dual station vise out on the machine and I'm gonna put a set of soft jaws in the front station and I'm gonna put a set of soft jaws in the back station. So I'm gonna start out by getting this configured and if you wanna follow along with me, you can. If you go to the data panel and come down to the samples directory, you'll see that there's a cam samples project. Inside of here, go find the work holding folder and then find the M-Lock folder now there is a M-Lock 125 Duo vise here that's in metric if you're crazy enough to use that. Of course, I'm gonna use the proper inch version by going to the inch versions folder and then I just opened up this M-Lock 125 Duo and did a file save as and put it in the project that I wanted to work in. So what I wanna do now is start out by creating the jaws, or the soft jaws for this part. And I'm gonna do that by going to the create menu and saying new component. And I'm gonna name my first component jaw one and I'll click OK. The rest of my assembly gets ghosted out. I really don't need to see it, so I'm gonna right click on this and say isolate, and that's just gonna remove everything off of my screen. And I'll create a sketch on my front plane, and I'm gonna start out with a rectangle, a center point rectangle anchored to the origin, and it's gonna be 1.5 inches tall. I'm gonna hit tab, and it's gonna be 5.2 inches wide. Now you can use D for dimension to get there or start the dimension command to apply those dimensions. And I'll finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude this one inch deep and I'm gonna hit okay. So everything's looking good so far. The last thing I wanna to do to this is give this some opacity. So I'm gonna right click on this body and say opacity control and set this to be 50%. Now you're not gonna see anything uh, for the opacity, the transparency until you activate the top level. And then we can see that this part is now transparent. I wanna make three more copies of this, and I want these to be independent copies. So I'm gonna right click on jaw one and say copy, and then I'm gonna right click on my design name, and I'm gonna choose the paste new option, which is gonna make an exact copy, but it's gonna break from the original so that it can be independent. I'm not gonna move it or anything, I'm just gonna leave it right in the position it was, but I am gonna rename this to be jaw two. So I'll just name this one jaw two, and I'll repeat the process. So I'll paste new, click okay, Slow double click to rename it. This is gonna be jaw three. Right click, paste new. Hit okay to put it in position. Slow double click on this and I'm gonna call this jaw four. So now I have four independent jaws. I am going to right click on jaw one and say unisolate, which is gonna bring everything else back. And I'm gonna turn off the visibility the visibility of jaws two, three, and four, so I can only see the visibility of jaw one. I need to move things around in this a little bit. Some joints have already been applied, so I'm just gonna drag this out a little, and I'm gonna drag this out a little bit. And now that gives me the opportunity to place the joints as I need them. So I'm gonna start out by doing an assembly and joint. And I'm gonna pick on this, on this face at this midpoint. Now, if you're having trouble getting to that point, you can hover your mouse over the face and hold down control or command, depending on if you're on Mac or Windows, and you'll lock onto those positions so you can't go to a different plane. And then I'm gonna repeat the process where I want this to join on my vice jaw. And then I'll hit okay. Now, if we look at this, you can see where the faces are coplanar. We get some graphical artifacting there where Fusion's having a problem displaying those planar faces at the same time. So I'm gonna do a minor little trick. I'm just gonna edit this joint and then I'm gonna reposition it. So I'm gonna drag off this way and I'm gonna say 0 0.001, very small amount. And I'm gonna drag up 0 0.001 as well. And now I'll hit okay. And when we look at this, now we don't see that visual artifacting. It's really only a thousand seven inch, so it's no big deal. We could probably even go with a smaller number if we wanted that to be closer. But for my design, that's not gonna matter at all. 
I'll turn off the visibility of jaw one and I'll turn on the visibility of jaw two. Now to speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna click on J for joint on my keyboard. I'm gonna click on that midpoint, uh, wrong one. I wanna choose the one on the back side. I could've used the one on the front without a problem, but I'm gonna choose the one on the back and I'm gonna go assemble that to that point right there. Moves into position, so I'm, again, I'm gonna put my 0 0.001 spacing in there and then I'll go up 0 0.001 and I'll hit okay. And that positions a second jaw so I'll turn on the third jaw J for joint choose my point rotate around choose my mating point pull my direction so point zero zero one I want to go up minus point zero zero one in this case it's negative for some particular reason and I'll hit OK to place that turn on my last jaw J for joint undo that sorry I'm gonna do J for joint I hit the line command by mistake and then come back and choose to put it back into that position and one last time do my point zero zero one and my minus point zero zero one and now I've got all the soft jaws attached I need to set the spacing between those but so before that I do that I'm gonna create a parameter so I'm gonna go modify change parameter and I'm gonna create a user parameter called front jaw spacing and I'm gonna set this to be 0.5 and I'll hit OK and I'll create one more called rear jaw spacing and again I'll set this to be 0.5 and I'll hit OK and I'm gonna hit OK now I want to add some joints I'm gonna do J for joint between this midpoint and then the same midpoint right there I'm gonna drag this direction I want it to go and I'm going to call this jaw uh, front jaw spacing and I'll hit OK. Now Fusion's warning me that I have a conflict in here somewhere between my different uh, joints. So I'm going to just go and edit all my joints. I'm going to take that offset off of there. I'm going to set this all to be zero and edit this one and click OK. Somehow I, I offset it the wrong direction so rather than I'm trying to figure out what I did. I'm just going to reset that back to zero. And now you see that my conflict is gone and everything moved into position. Let's do the joint one more time. We'll try it between here. I might have that same issue. We'll find out. I'm going to go from between here and here. And now that, I'm going to drag it, is going to be rear jaw spacing. And I'll click on that and say OK. And that one worked out just fine so I don't have to pull the, my position. So somewhere I pulled one of these jaws the wrong way. Uh, maybe I'll go back and fix that later. but. It's only a visual thing and won't affect what I'm trying to do here. So what this allows me to do now is I can go modify and change parameters and I can change whatever number I want here and it'll open and close the jaw faces for me. So everything is working okay on the vise. Now what I eventually wanna do is draw my part and place it between these two soft jaws, which is going to be really difficult because there's nothing located between these two soft jaws to reference it off. So I'd have to choose a point and drag over this way and drag so far down, and that's just a lot of math that I don't wanna do. So I wanna talk about something called joint origins. That's gonna allow me to do that automatically. On the assembly menu, I'm gonna create a joint origin and I'm gonna go find where I want that joint origin to be anchored to and I'm gonna drag that off a little bit. Now, I don't wanna change this dimension every time I change the jaw spacing, so I'm gonna create a link. I'm gonna call this jaw uh, front jaw spacing and say divide by two. And now I'll hit enter. And now that joint origin appears right at that exact place. So if I wanna assemble my part there, I have a, a part that I can, I have a, a spot that I can anchor that to. I'm gonna repeat that process one more time. So assemble, joint origin, I'm gonna to go to this jaw. We could use either jaw for this, whichever one you wanna use. I'm just gonna offset that and I'm going to talk about, I'm gonna call this rear jaw spacing. Divide that by two and hit enter. And now if I were to go modify, change parameters, and if I set one of these to be zero and the other one to be two and I hit okay, now we see that the joint origin is exactly where I want it there, and it still remained in the center there, so everything seems to be functioning properly. So I'm ready to move on and draw the component that I need to make for this particular design. To do that, I'm going to create a new design, and the first thing I'm going to do is hit the Save button, and I will call this Go No Go Gauge. And I'll hit Save. 
And then I'm going to create a new component. And I'm going to call this gauge, G-A-U-G-E. And hit OK. And before I do anything, the first thing I want to do is add an as-built joint between this component and the origin so that it can't possibly move. So from the assemble menu, I'm going to choose as-built joint. I'm going to click on the word gauge and the word origin and hit OK. And now an origin is going to, or a joint is going to appear at the origin of my design. I could turn that joint off if I want to, if I didn't want to see it. And I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to start out by drawing a line. I'm just going to kind of draw a line over here. I want this to be a center line type. So my line type on my sketch palette, I'm going to change it to center line. I'm just going to draw some line, make sure it's vertical. And I want it to be about three inches in length. And I'm going to add a midpoint constraint between the line and the origin. I'm being a little overkill with this, but that's okay. Now, the rest of the things I want to draw are going to be regular geometry. So I'm just going to come off to the side. I'm going to draw an axis. And then I'm just going to kind of draw my shape out. So I'll come over, come down, come over a little bit come down, come out, come down, come back. And then I'm going to drag this in a little bit more for my bottom section. So I'm going to start the line command again, come down, come over, come down and finish up right there. I did an okay job of most of this. I missed a couple things. So I'm gonna add a horizontal vertical constraint on this bottom line to make sure that's squared up. But this is vertical and I see perpendicular constraints everything everywhere else. So I'm, I know I'm good to go that way. Uh, so I'm going to add a midpoint constraint now between this line and the origin just to get that place where I want it to be. I do know that these line, these four lines right here are all gonna be the same length. So I'm gonna start the equal constraint and click on this line and this line and this line, and this line, and this line, and that line. And the dimension for all of these is going to be 0.5. And so that changes that up. Now, this should be perfectly centered on the origin, which is what I want. And I'm ready to start adding in the uh, diameters. And I could also give this a total height here if I wanted to do that as well. So let's go grab a dimension. I want, the reason I created this center line type is because if I click on that first and I click on my diameters, it's going to do just that. It's going to give me the diameter. So this diameter is going to be 0.5. I'm going to do the same thing between D for dimension between that and this diameter, and that's going to be 0.55. Repeat the process out to here is going to be. 1.25 and then as I continue on this will fix itself as I need it to so this is going to be 1.05 and this final one will be one inch so there's there's the shape I need this to be now I could either give the total overall length of this part or I could dimension the center section. And I know this center section right here is going to be 0.25 inches tall. And when I click on that, now that fully defines my sketch. Things are a little messy if I wanted to. I could move things around and clean it up a little bit. Pull my dimensions around just to make it more visually organized. And I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna finish my sketch. I'm going to start the revolve command because there's a center line in the closed profile. I didn't have to do anything in this case. Fusion did the work for me and said, oh, I found a closed profile. I found an axis rotation. I'm just going to create the, the revolve command for you. And that's exactly what I want. So I can go ahead and hit OK. And that's going to give me the component that I need to machine. Now I need to decide, do I want to bring the vise into this design? Do I want to bring the, uh, start a new file where I place the design in this part? So we have different choices. I think what I'll probably do is bring that vise that I created and place it into this design. So I'm going to save my file to make sure that I'm good to go. And now we'll look at the process of how to bring that MLOC 125 dual vise into my component design. To add my vise to this design, I'm just going to go to my data panel find my vise, right click on it and say insert in the current design. And then while it's doing that, I can close the data panel back out to give myself some more room and I'll just drag this around and hit okay. 
and you can see right now it's currently a linked file which means if I go to modify change parameters none of the parameters I need are here so I'm going to right click on this and choose to break the link so that separates from the original parent file and now when I modify and change parameters my parameters are back and I know what I'm going to use is a 0.375 spacing between each one of the jaws so I'm going to just set that up ahead of time I could do this at any point but I'm just going to do it right now and I'll hit OK and I have my uh, spacing set. So now I'm ready to do is position my part or my my part is positioned. I'm going to position my vise into my part is the way it's going to work in this one. So I'm going to do that by adding a joint and I'm going to choose the joint origin and I'm going to choose either where I want that to mate up. So if I wanted to I could go grab this edge right here and that would work. It's only going to preview the thing that the joint origin is applied to and maybe I'll give myself a little bit of spacing. So I'm going to say minus 0.125 that gives me a little bit of clearance and now when I hit OK my soft jaws move up and my vise move up into position. So this is what I'm gonna be kind of anchoring down to. And in my first operation, I'm gonna machine everything down to this bottom edge a little bit past. And so that's why I've given myself a little bit of clearance there. And so that positions my part where I want it to be in the first set of soft jaws. Now what I need to do is add a second instance of the soft jaws in. Um, a second instance of the part in so that I can uh, put it in the rear station. So I'm gonna right click on gauge and say copy. And then I'm going to right click and say paste. And I don't want to paste new in this case because I want it to be the same part. And I can do a little bit of work if I want to. I can kind of rotate this into position. So maybe I'll call that 180 degrees because that's how it's going to be. I'm going to flip it around in the backside. And then I'll hit OK. And now I can do another joint. And I could position it maybe from there to that spot. So that's going to put it all the way into the soft jaws. And again, maybe I want to give myself a little bit of clearance. So I'll come up point 125 and I'll hit OK and that will give me what I'm going to use to hold for the second position of the soft jaws. So I'm looking at the video. I'm a little over 15 minutes or so. I think what I'll do is I'll show how I create the cavity in each of the soft jaws in the next video when we go ahead and create the cam tool path. If you guys have any questions about anything that I've shown so far in this video, please leave them in the comments below. You can also email me kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com and before I go, I want to make sure I save my design. I hope you guys are going to find this format useful in doing it this way. Uh, I hope you tune in to the next video to check out the cam tool pathing before we move on to the final video and actually go and manufacture this part. That's what I have for you today, and as always, thanks for watching.